Good afternoon and welcome to the worship service of Victoria Congregational Church in Briarwood, Jamaica, New York, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. Today is September the 25th, Sunday, the uh, 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Glad you're worshiping with us. For those who are able, let us please stand for the call to worship and opening hymn. The stock market, pension plans, the security of social security, odd jobs, supplemental income, physically and mentally making it, making it to an ever-extending retirement date. Setting a goal on the uncertainty of riches becomes increasingly chancy. So that we may take hold of the life that really is life. Let us set our hopes on God who provides us with everything we need. Come and let us worship God. <clears throat> let us remain standing as we sing, In the bulb there is a flower. service, <clears throat> we'll be going into our Psalter reading, which will be Psalm number 146. The response will be, I will praise God as long as I live. Let us begin with the response. I will praise God as long as I live. Praise be to God. Praise God, God, my soul. I will praise God as long as I live. 
Do not put your trust in nobles, in mortals, when their breath departs, they return to the earth. I will praise God as long as I live. Happy are those whose help is God of Jacob. Who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them? Who keeps faith forever? Who executes justice for the oppressed? Who gives food to the hungry? I will praise God as long as I live. God sets the prisoner free. God opens the eyes of those who cannot see. God lifts up those who are bowed low. God loves those who are righteous. God watches over the strangers and upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the God brings to the poor. The sovereign will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise to God. I will praise God as long as I live. This time it's our privilege to come before God with our heads bowed and confessing our shortcomings, but also hearing God's blessing. Let us pray together the prayer of confession. We are the children of a loving God and heirs to a great promise. God promises to protect and shelter us from danger. Even in times of war and distress, God strengthened our ancestors with the word of hope. Yet we cling to fear and try to protect ourselves with wealth and possessions that do not satisfy. Forgive us, God, for our lack of faith and our faltering love for you. Restore us and renew our hope. Amen. Hear these words of the assurance of God's blessing. The word, the God who created us is the God who guides us. The God who cautions us cautions us not to set our hopes on riches, is the God who promises to provide everything for our enjoyment. God calls us today to take hold of the life that is really life. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. For those who are able, let us please stand as we recite our statement of faith for today, the Apostles' Creed, an alternate version. I believe in God, the Father, Mother, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only child, our Sovereign, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, having ascended to the dead, and having risen on the third day. Christ ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of the Father, Mother, and from there will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us greet one another with the peace of Christ for you at home. Uh, greet the person beside you, hug them, give them a kiss on the cheek, hold their hand, or if no one is with you, pause the video or after the worship, call a person up, someone you haven't heard from for a while, or someone you just missed their voice, and say, may God's peace be with you. I wanted to hear your voice. You may be seated. <clears throat> so, our first lesson will be read by Elkie Moranis. And this is from 1 Timothy. Chapter 6 to 619. Of course, there is great gain in goodliness combined with, the content, with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will co be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. 
fight the good fight of the faith, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made a good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty, or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may make hold of the life that really is life. May God's blessing be added to these words that we have heard. We come to our time of our sharing of joys and concerns and the prayers of the people. Uh, we are reminded that in this uh, sometimes crazy world that, uh, that there are spots that we see bright lights, uh, a good, you know, that we see family, we see new life, and we see that God is in, at work in the world. And so we share those good times, but we also share our wants and our needs. So are there specific joys or concerns you'd like to share today? I'd say uh, a prayer for uh, the government uh, for the United States and other world governments uh, as we know that uh, in this past week as we have watched the news we know that the United Nations had met and we know that um, sometimes all players don't play fair in, in world politics and in local politics so we pray for God's guidance and God's deliverance from oppression are there other specific concerns today, maybe for individuals or for upcoming surgeries or anything? I am reminded that as we are worshiping even now, we hear the car, the car horns honking, that we are still part of New York City, and so, uh, while the weather is cooler, we still need to keep the doors open for a little air circulation. So, um, but those car horns remind me there are other people too are in the world. We're not alone. So, uh, we live in God's world and we pray for all those that are around us. Our um, prayer today for the prayers of the people is actually one from the Catholic Church. And in the Catholic Church this week, they have a World Day for Migrants and Refugees that uh, goes back to World War I. Uh, we celebrated a Migrant uh, Refugee Day in August at the United Church of Christ, but I think it's good to remind us that all people are concerned uh, for migrants and refugees, maybe not in the, in the same way, but we do are concerned for the humanitarian efforts and that God will take care of them. Our response today when you hear, we pray to the Lord, will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us begin. Jesus warns us that God, our parent, will judge us not only on our actions, but on the influence for good or evil we have on others. We pray that in our lives, by our words and actions, we reflect the goodness and love of Christ, our Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all followers of Christ throughout the world that they be inspired and united faithfulness 
to his word and be living examples of his message of love and forgiveness to all mankind. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all church leaders and all those who work for reform and renewal of the church so that our inheritance from Christ be a beacon of hope and love for the troubled, the poor, the hungry, and the homeless of this world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling to reform their lives, that through the love of their heavenly Creator and the encouragement and support of family, friends, and society, that they may overcome the temptations and weaknesses which are destroying their lives and are a bad example to others. We pray to the Lord. On this World Day for Migrants and Refugees, we pray for all those who are forced to flee from war, injustice, hunger, and poverty, that they may travel safely and be received generously by those who are blessed with peace, prosperity, and a better life. We pray to the Lord. In this month of September, when our Christian churches celebrate the season of creation, we pray for a greater awareness of our responsibility to be guardians of the wonderful world bestowed upon us by our Heavenly Creator and to oppose all actions that threaten our natural environment. We pray to the Lord. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask that you hear our prayers and grant us new life and hope through faith in your infinite love and generosity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, as we continue our worship, let us uh, continue with our gospel lesson today from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. For those who are able, let us please stand for the gospel lesson. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs could come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets, and they should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. So I believe that in our lives, we pass up opportunities. We pass up times where we could have had something that was better for us, but at the, at the moment we said, no, 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 I'm going to do something else. Uh, when I was younger, there was a man that was talking about uh, as he was a young man, there was another individual coming through town 
trying to have people buy into this new technology, that it was something that was going to be great and, and nobody had seen before. It was advancing photography, photography like you wouldn't believe. And he said, the man was talking about the Polaroid camera, the instant Polaroid. He said, nobody believed him, nobody thought the fad would catch on. And as the story was told to me in the 70s, he said, I could have been a millionaire by now. <laughs> but he's like, I can't do anything about it. That was in the past, and now I can't do anything about it. And most of us realize we can't do anything about the past. We can learn about mistakes, and we can move on, and we can learn from those mistakes. But some people keep repeating those same uh, same indiscretions, uh, same stubbornness of not to listen to the lessons of the past and repeat those mistakes over and over again. And that's a little bit what this lesson is about today. So Jesus is talking about this rich man that had died and we would probably say had gone to hell. Right? It's, he's, he's in this in-between place, as, as some people like to think about a holding place, maybe purgatory at one time, but this was like a little bit below purgatory, because uh, Father Abraham said, there's no way past, and there, uh, God says, there's no way past the chasm now. You're there. You're stuck. <laughs> you just can't get out. And then there's this poor man, Lazarus, who, who had a rough life, evidently. He sat outside the gates and he begged for somebody just to give him a little bit of food, maybe a place to stay, or maybe just a little bit of something so that he could get along. And so when Lazarus died, though, he went to paradise. He went to that opposite of Hades, that opposite of hell, to the paradise, into what we would call maybe heaven, into Abraham's bosom, as they used to call it. So in, in, into... Uh, into this place, into this promised land that we are promised today. Something like we would be hoping for as we walk our Christian walk, as we look forward to the everlasting life, as we look forward to heaven. Uh, we might want to call that into Abraham's bosom, we're kept safe. Uh, Abraham was looking for the promised land and then finally came to the promised land that God had said, Abraham, leave your, your place here in Ur, the Chaldeans, trust me, I'm going to give you something that's far beyond your imagination. And you are going to have so many generations after you that will also be there and given part of this blessing. And so here we are, Lazarus has gone to heaven. The person who had such a hard life and tried every which way to get ahead, but kind of went along with the punches and said, I know my lot in life, but I'll take what I get. And just smile and say, thank you. Thank you that I at least have something today. And here is this other rich man that did not care for Lazarus while he was alive, did not care for the beggars outside the gate, did not care for those around him that did not match his stature, did not match his uh, his caste system did not match his level of intelligence, did not match his family's credentials. And so when the end time came, and all of us face that end time, both Lazarus and the rich man faced judgment. Lazarus, because of the faithfulness of accepting the mercy and grace that was given to him whenever possible, came into the inheritance of to be in Abraham's bosom, to be in paradise in heaven. But the rich man did not care for anyone. The rich man had his reward already in the lifetime that he had. He said, I don't need anything else. I have it already. I have me. It's, it's why it's hard for a rich man to enter to heaven, because many rich people think they have it already, but not all. Not all rich people think that way, do they? Otherwise, we wouldn't have the benevolence and the humanitarian efforts and the love of God pouring out through these people that have, have money and have been blessed, and they bless others with those uh, buildings. In the United Church of Christ, we think of um, 
the Riverside Church that was part of the United Church of Christ and the American Baptist, but the Rockefellers actually very benevolent to build that, that wonderful structure, very beautiful, and used not only just the house, the church people, but they even allow the homeless come in at night, they can sleep in the hallway, they have programs to help other people out, very benevolent and sharing of God's blessing with others. And other traditions have those same kind of, of wonderful things that have been blessed because others share and they share with one another. And so as we move forward in our life, we think about this, this story and the rich man only after he's dead realizes there was something more that he needed. That there was something in the back of the rich man's in the rich man's mind, he looks and for some reason he gets a glimpse to paradise and goes, oh, there's that man that stood out and begged and he's probably in his mind going, oh, all these years I just took it for granted. Finally he says, oh, why don't you just let him give me just, you know, dip his finger in water and just touch my tongue, I'm so parched. And the answer is no. You can't cross that chasm. And after the rich man realizes there's nothing he can do to cross the chasm, he goes, can you send at least Lazarus or someone to go back and talk to my family? I got five more brothers. I don't want them to end up the same way. Uh, the rich man may not have cared for anybody else outside of his household, but he did care about his five brothers. And the answer says, no. It wouldn't do any good. If, if you didn't listen to Moses and the prophets, even if someone came back from the dead, you wouldn't listen. You already thought you knew it all. You thought you didn't need anything else. You felt so self-sufficient. Why would it be any different? And here in Luke, we're coming to the end of Jesus' ministry here in Luke chapter 16. And so we see a culmination of the teachings of Jesus coming into this little pericope, a story that we're hearing, and this parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And Jesus is giving this forewarning, he says, I am coming back from the dead. But that's not even going to convince some people. It is faith that moves you forward, faith that God will work, Faith that God keeps promises, not like us. And so, we sometimes say, oh man, if I would have seen the resurrection, do you know how much more faith I would have had? The truth is, no. Jesus, even after the resurrection, when he finally sees Thomas, and Thomas says, you know, Thomas has this thing about, unless I can... Feel the nail prints in Jesus' hand and thrust my fist into the side of Jesus. I'm not going to believe that he's alive. And after a couple of appearances to the disciples, those apostles, Thomas finally sees Jesus and never does have to touch the hands, but gives his proclamation, my God and my Savior. And so, my Lord, my God. And Jesus looks at Thomas and goes, do you believe because you have seen me, or do you believe because of your faith? And then we get this saying, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. It increases our faith even more that, that we have our doubts, but we keep moving on. I'm sure Lazarus didn't sit at the gate happy all the time, saying, Somebody's going to help me. Somebody's going to help me. I'm sure there were days that Lazarus sat around and going, Why? Why, oh God, do I have to be in this condition? Why? Why, oh God, do I have to be here? But yet, he promised to provide. And it is in that position that we are here. That when we recognize that God answers our prayers, we come with celebration and say, Thank you, God. I have so much more to do and move forward. Thank you for helping me at this point. Now help me to move further, 
further to that ultimate goal, to the ultimate prize, the high calling of God through Christ Jesus. We're pressing forward to our heavenly home. And as we go along, we are helping others along the way, spreading the love of God that has been given to us. May we be like that poor man named Lazarus. May we learn the lessons and not be like the rich man who forgot those that were outside. Amen and amen. Our offertory today is many and great, and it is a Native American, based upon a Native American hymn, and so that offertory is in honor of our uh, create, honor and creation month in September. <laughs> together the prayer of dedication. Dear God, we give you thanks for the blessings of our lives and for the promise of everlasting life in communion with you. We offer these gifts as a small expression of our gratitude. Accept them and use them to build a world where all have food and clothing and where all know your love. Amen. You may be seated as we close our service today. We'll be singing Guide My Feet. After our closing hymn, we'll receive the benediction. <laughs>
For those who are able, let us stand as we receive the benediction. Go into the world restored and renewed. Go into the world assured of God's goodness. Go into the world knowing that our hope rests not on our possessions, but in God's promise. May that knowledge inspire you to serve all, you, all that you see. In the name of the God of life. Amen. Amen.